ongoing custody battle over Bert. On June 1st, 1996, John is court instructed to pay child support, $750 per month, inflating to $1,000 per month in 1998. He still has visiting privileges with Bert. The newly married Michael and Tracy are looking for a change of scenery. I want to get away from the big city. Tracy and Michael moved early in 1998. They moved from one of the largest cities in the United States, probably one of the smallest. Found a quaint Victorian home. largely dependent upon local agriculture and so it's it's very quaint and a lot of families that live there for you know generations upon generations but even in a new town issues with her ex-husband john Pittman persist he has visitation rights and therefore bert must share his time between tracy and john's places tracy isn't happy about the arrangement john is pushing to have full custody of bert and tracy is afraid she may lose her son in 2001, the custody case over Bert is looming. But life for Tracy and Michael in early Iowa is good. Michael is busy with his computer business, and Tracy has since had another child, a daughter. Then, on December 13, 2001, less than two weeks before Christmas, Michael has to go out of town. Michael was on a business trip with his business partner. Tracy is home alone with the kids when the unthinkable happens. Okay. Okay, Tracy's son, Bert Pittman, made a 911 call. The 911 operator picked up and received what was a very frantic and hurried message that was very disjointed. 911 technology did identify the Roberts residence as being the, the source of the call. An officer is dispatched, though they have no idea what they're walking into. Within minutes, a deputy is on the scene. He's approaching and very cautious, you know, concerned not just for you know his own safety, but the safety of the neighbors, the safety of Tracy and her children inside the home. He placed himself behind a large tree adjacent to the Roberts home and then had dialogue with Tracy, who had stepped out of the side door and communicated that not one but two men had fled and she pointed in the direction that they had gone. As he comes out from behind the tree cover, he looks closely in the direction that Tracy said the men fled. But oddly enough, there are no tracks in the snow. Maybe in all the commotion, she's simply confused about the direction that they actually went. His main concern now is making sure that he gets everybody inside the house so that Tracy and her kids are safe. The deputy checks if Tracy and the children are okay and asks for details of what happened. The scenario that she describes is that she runs into the bedroom. Somebody comes in after her and grabs her and has a sort of pantyhose or some sort of scarf around her neck and is just yanking at her. So far between the 911 call and Tracy's bursts of information, it's not clear if there's someone still in the home. And if there is someone in the home, are they a threat? The deputy finally gets Tracy to confirm there is someone upstairs, but she shot him several times and she's pretty sure he's dead. A second officer arrives on the scene, allowing the deputy to leave Tracy and her kids while he sweeps the rest of the home. The officer points to the white vehicle in the driveway. Tracy says it isn't hers and that it must belong to the intruder. All the lights, save for the kitchen, appear to be off. The deputy makes his way through the house with his flashlight. He finds a light switch at the foot of the stairs, and as he goes along, he continues to call out, announcing himself. If there is still someone there, they need to know that he's a police officer and that they need to show themselves. 
the deputy slowly makes his way down the hall towards the master bedroom. Before even getting to the bedroom, he can see that there's a body of a man on the floor near the doorway. He calls out, but there's no response. And as he gets closer, you can see why. He's lying on the ground in a pool of blood. The deputy can see he's been shot several times. There's very little chance that this individual is still alive. He checks for a pulse. There is none. Whoever this home invader was, he was killed by Tracy in self-defense. There is literally still smoke in the air from the guns, and it smells like a weapon has just been fired. The deputy calls down to the other officer, letting him know that the intruder is dead and that the house is secure. Tracy and her children have just suffered a harrowing ordeal. It'll now be up to investigators to put all the pieces together in an effort to understand why they are the targets of this home invasion gone wrong and how it ended in the death of this young man. There were two figures coming up the stairs, and I saw the face of the first one come up. There was a struggle in the hallway. I was screaming, don't move. I've been driving a truck all my life. A bear ran across the front of my truck, and I had to avoid him. Instead of hitting him, I got a good settlement for it and everything. And that helped me to go out and acquire gold and silver. I got the brochure from the U.S. Money Reserve, and that's when I decided I can make more money with this than I could leaving it in the bank. Because if I put 20 grand of paper in there, and have 20 grand of gold, the paper ain't gonna make me any money. But I just bought it because it's uh, my insurance policy. If you'd like to learn more about why physical gold should be an important part of your portfolio, pick up the phone and call to receive the complete guide to buying gold, which will provide you with important, never seen before facts you should know about making gold purchases. U.S. Money Reserve is one of the most dependable gold distributors in America. Have you compared your Medicare plan recently? With eHealth, you can compare Medicare plans side by side for free. So we invited people to give eHealth a try and discover how easy it can be to find your Medicare match. This is pretty amazing. I can go on a vacation with this money. I had quite a few prescriptions. That's why people call us. We're going to compare plans, and I'm going to try to get you as much bang for your buck as possible. That's great. This one here covers all your prescriptions, your doctors as well. Oh, wonderful. I, I have a hard time with this. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. Based on our conversation today, I would highly recommend this plan. You're so helpful. You know, you don't know. <laughs> I'm excited for you, sir. Again, my name is Jim. If you have any other questions, give me a ring. Thank you very much. Oh, my God, that was super easy. Oh. See how your Medicare plan stacks up with the big changes for 2025. Just call this number or get started at eHealth.com. Compare plans that cover your doctors, prescriptions, pharmacy, and budget. And compare plans from the nation's top insurance companies. They pay us to help you. How much do you think you'll be able to save using eHealth? At least $300 a month. Would you say you found your Medicare match? Yes, I did. What Sam did, she explained to me exactly what I need to know. Well, I have a surprise for you. Sam, come on out. Oh, my goodness. I just wanted to meet you today, sir. What does it feel like to be face-to-face? -face? You helped me out quite a bit. <laughs> Call to meet your advisor. They're paid the same no matter which Medicare Advantage plan you choose. Ask them about eHealth Live Advice or get started on your own at eHealth.com. Either way, it's always a free service. See if you could get more for less with eHealth, like these folks did. The savings are unbelievable. I could see the costs side by side. eHealth is wonderful. $1,200 savings in my pocket. I was really pleasantly surprised at that. Call 1-800-568-2261 or go to eHealth.com to compare Medicare plans in your area. eHealth, your Medicare matchmaker. If you're on Medicare, remember, the annual enrollment period is here. The time to choose your coverage begins October 15th and ends December 7th. So call United Healthcare and get coverage you can count on for your whole life ahead with our broad range of plans, including an AARP Medicare Advantage plan from United Healthcare. It can combine your hospital and doctor coverage with Part D prescription drug coverage and more. 
all in one simple plan for a low or zero dollar monthly premium. United Healthcare offers reliable plans with benefits built to be used, including zero dollar annual physical exams, zero dollar lab tests, and zero dollar preventive care like mammograms and colonoscopies. And you'll get more for your Medicare dollar with zero dollar copays on covered routine dental services, a zero dollar eye exam, and an allowance for eyewear, plus zero dollar copays on hundreds of prescriptions at the pharmacy or by mail. Now's the time to look at United Healthcare's variety of plans. So give us a call to learn more about coverage options in your area, all designed to fit your needs and budget. And to help make your Medicare experience simpler, you'll get the all-in-one U card. Only from United Healthcare, the U card is your member ID and much more. Show your U card when you visit your primary care provider, dentist, or eye doctor, or fill a prescription at the pharmacy. And use it to access Medicare Advantage's largest national network of providers. Now, if you have any of these chronic conditions, be sure to ask about United Healthcare's chronic special needs plan. Enrollment ends December 7th. Now's the time to learn more about America's most chosen Medicare Advantage brand. Call or click to connect with United Healthcare today about the only Medicare Advantage plans with the AARP name for coverage you can count on for your whole life ahead. Tracy Ritter meets Dr. John Pittman while living in Chicago, and the two are quickly married. They have a son together named Bert, and after a few years, they divorce. Rather quickly, Tracy is remarried to an Australian man she meets online, Michael Roberts. Their honeymoon phase is short-lived, however, as the custody war with Dr. Pittman over Bert begins. Tracy, Bert, and Michael move to early Iowa, they have two more kids. Life is fairly simple and quiet until the evening of December 13th, 2001, when intruders break into the home while Michael is away on business. Tracy manages to fight back, and in the struggle, one of the intruders is shot dead. With the area secured, the EMT can now enter the home. He pronounces the young man dead at 7.22 p.m. The deputy then calls for the DCI lab team and special agents to come to the scene. There are multiple gunshots and blood spatter everywhere. There's lots here that needs thorough analysis. Detectives try to get a statement from Tracy, but she's preoccupied, demanding to know the identity of the man upstairs that she shot. She keeps mentioning her ex-husband, Dr. John Pittman, certain that he's somehow involved. But the deputy knows pretty much everybody in the community, and he conveys to her that the dead body upstairs is likely Tracy's neighbor. So Dustin Wee was this 19-year-old kid who had some learning disabilities. One of the most easygoing, friendly, quiet people in town. And when he met Tracy Richter and Michael Roberts, Michael kind of took Dustin under his wing and meant for it. Dustin craved, you know, approval and attention. He didn't have many friends. He had very, very few friends. And so the Roberts at least presented as friends to Dustin. And I know that Dustin believed that everybody in that family, even Tracy, was a friend. The revelation that she's just shot and killed her neighbor, a friend of the family's, comes as a shock to Tracy. She can't fathom why he'd want to hurt her or her children after everything Michael has done to accept him into their home. Tracy said she didn't know who it was. She didn't know who she shot and killed, but it was Bert at that time. When Tracy said she didn't know, Bert said something to the effect of, well, it was Dustin, Mom, don't you know? It was Dustin that we had seen. And so that's when she hyperventilated, and, and then they whisked her away to the emergency room. While Tracy and her kids are taken to hospital, the deputy medical examiner arrives on the scene. The detectives can immediately see that it is a very grisly scene. 
the victim is located on the ground with blood pooling around his body and multiple visible shots to his head and upper body. Additionally, there are large amounts of blood spatter throughout the room. He notices something in the pocket of the jeans and he removes the wallet. Inside the wallet is identification that confirms that the suspicion is that this young man is in fact the mild-mannered neighbor who does the while Tracy awaits medical attention, detectives ask for her account of events. But Tracy isn't willing to talk to detectives just yet, and the lieutenant obliges, leaving her to the care of medical professionals for the time being. Tracy had never given uh, a statement to law enforcement until after she had spoken with the local neighbor. She didn't speak with the detectives, the state detective bureau. She contacted the local newspaper and asked them to come interview her, and she gave them a full-blown interview. Tracy recounts for the reporter the deadly home invasion that she's just survived. She explains that her husband Michael is away on business. She's running a bath for her daughter when she hears a noise from downstairs. She's upstairs, she hears people come in, and she looks down the stairs and she sees someone. There were two figures coming up the stairs and I saw the face of the first one come up and it wasn't Michael. I ran away and was going into the boys' room when I was grabbed from behind. There was a struggle in the hallway that started out in front of Bert's room, there was something around my neck. I was twisting and jerking and kicking and trying to get free, and I couldn't get free. The next thing I remember is waking up on the floor in the guest room bedroom. I heard my oldest boy yelling, and I thought I was having a bad dream. Um, I got up, and I, I, I immediately ran towards the commotion that was occurring outside Bert's room. Halfway there, I realized, well, what was I going to do? There were what appeared to be two figures down there. Tracy knows she needs to fight. She beelines it to her bedroom, where she and Michael keep a gun safe. I went between the bed and the dresser wall. I was trying to get the gun safe to open, and it wasn't opening up. And then there was someone grabbing at me. Tracy repeatedly tries the combination lock in the dark, and just when she's about to be overpowered, the safe opens. These weren't really guns for novice people. We're talking a 440 a 357 you know those are hand cannons you fire that gun you're gonna kill somebody with that gun but i fired until the figure that was there wasn't standing there anymore i heard my kids screaming i reached into the gun safe grabbed a second weapon and then i ran down the hall to the kids room and uh Open their door, and Bert almost took my head off with a baseball bat. At that point, I asked if they were okay. They said they were fine. Then she hears moaning coming from the bedroom. She goes back to check on the intruder. She tells reporters that at this time she hadn't identified the person as her neighbor. Tracy sees the man moving. I was screaming, "Don't move! Don't get up!" They kept trying to get up. I eventually fired, I believe, one round. After he fails to comply, she fires until he stops moving. Tracy finishes her harrowing account of what happens by speculating that her ex-husband, Dr. John Pittman, is involved. At this point, there's no evidence to corroborate this theory, other than a hush, but that may soon change. While investigators search for the unidentified man who got away, they also have the unenviable task of informing Dustin's parents that their son was shot and killed.
They confirmed that he leaves around 5.30 p.m. and that the white car at the robber's house is his. Investigators look to obtain a warrant to search the car. They're hopeful there may be some piece of evidence that can illuminate Dustin's motive in this home invasion gone wrong. Hello. Today we are talking about Medicare Advantage plans, also known as Medicare Part C. If you have original Medicare, you have Medicare Part A and Part B. Part A covers hospital stays, while Part B covers medical visits like seeing the doctor. A Medicare Part C plan covers everything in Parts A and B and could save you money or include additional benefits you may not be receiving with your current plan. Right now is the Medicare annual enrollment period, and now is the time to call and enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that could include additional benefits. All you have to do to enroll in a plan that could save you money or include additional benefits is follow these steps. 1. Call the number on your screen. 2. Give your zip code to the licensed insurance agent. And 3. Find a plan best for you and your needs. Part C plans can change every year. Call now, even if you've called in the past, because you could be eligible for 2025 plans with additional benefits that may have previously been unavailable to you. So call today and find out the plan options available to you in your zip code. You do not automatically get enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan that saves money or includes additional benefits. So you should call now during the annual enrollment period to find out what plans are available to you. Insurance companies offer different plans in different zip codes. Call today and find out what plans are available to you in your zip code. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll in a Part C plan that could save you money and include additional benefits. All you have to do is follow these steps. 1. Call the number on your screen. 2. Give your zip code to the licensed insurance agent. And 3. Find a plan best for you and your needs. Remember, you do not automatically get a Part C plan. Call now during the Medicare annual enrollment period for your free 2025 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800-754-1523. 800-754-1523. Why should you be interested in a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan? With a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan, you could be eligible to receive more benefits than original Medicare, like dental, vision, and hearing coverage at no additional cost. And if you have both Medicare and Medicaid, you could receive even more benefits with the WellCare Spendables card. You could receive a WellCare Spendables debit card with an allowance for over-the-counter health items. A Medicare Advantage plan for WellCare could offer you additional benefits including vision coverage that can help pay for eye exams and new glasses or contacts, hearing coverage, and dental coverage, which may include checkups and cleanings, plus prescription drug coverage to help lower your costs. And you could receive these additional benefits all for a $0 or a low monthly plan premium. Call WellCare now for an all-in-one guide to learn more. WellCare Medicare Advantage plans also include covering the cost of preventive care services and annual tests. Plus fitness benefits, mental health services with TWIL, a digital mental health and social support resource, and telehealth. WellCare has been in healthcare for more than 35 years. We're passionate about helping people get the right coverage. Call WellCare now for an all-in-one guide to learn more and for one-on-one -on -one consultation with an experienced WellCare licensed sales agent. If you wait, you could miss out on valuable benefits you deserve, like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage. WellCare, the coverage you need and more. Call the number on your screen or visit our website today. At Consumer Cellular, we pride ourselves on giving you fast, reliable, nationwide coverage at up to half the cost of the leading carriers. But don't worry, we've got more than that going for us. Like this beautiful store in Arizona, for example. It's a perfect place for me to tell you a little bit more about our phones and how they can become your phones. You name it, we probably got it. We have the top smartphones from all the major companies. If it's state-of-the-art cameras you want, we got them. If you want a smartphone with lots of bells and whistles but won't break the bank, we've got that too. We even have a flip phone, like the Iris Flip. We even have watches. I know what you're thinking. What if I don't have one of these amazing stores in my town yet? 
Can I get these phones sent to me? Yes, you can. Is it easy? Easy as pie. New customers save $50 when you sign up today. Call 800-918-5494. Find us in Target or visit ConsumerCellular.com to switch today. She knows what she's talking about. Pick up the phone. Coming up next on True Crime Network. On December 13th, 2001, two men break into Tracy Richter's home while her husband Michael is away on business. Tracy is attacked, but manages to get to the gun safe. She kills one of the intruders in self-defense. Her neighbor, Dustin Heavey. Officers meticulously photograph the home and collect evidence, including the two guns Tracy uses to kill Dustin. A search of the house reveals no forced entry, and nothing appears to be stolen. There are no signs of ransacking in any of the rooms in the house. The only room that appears to be disturbed is the master bedroom where the shooting takes place. The detectives realize that blood spatter is going to be important to this case and that they need to document how the blood was deposited. Looking at how the blood is deposited can help tell the story of what happened and give the detectives some insight into what took place and how it took place. Right now, one of the biggest questions still looming is what motivated the attack. But Tracy is convinced she already knows who is behind this, her ex-husband, John Pitt. Officers obtain a warrant and search Dustin's car. Dustin Weedy's car is parked in the driveway of the Roberts home. And in full view, lying on the seat is a journal, a notebook. Investigators bag it for evidence to be looked at later. There's not much else of interest in the car except an old computer, but it's unlikely that this is what Dustin came here to steal. The lieutenant is looking through Dustin's notebook when something catches his eye. He sees the name John Pittman written several times. In the notebook is this kind of narrative in Dustin Weedy's handwriting, confirmed, about how John Pittman, Tracy's first husband, arranged this whole home invasion and the murder of Tracy and her son Bert. So two things now we have to look at. One is, how did Dustin Weedy know John Pittman? John Pittman lives in Chicago. He's never even been to early Iowa. Investigators immediately request handwriting samples from Dustin's parents, careful not to bring up any mention of the notebook that was found in his vehicle. An expert is able to examine the handwriting and determines that it is a match. There is no doubt that that is Dustin Weedy's handwriting. He wrote that narrative. If he wrote that narrative, then you have to believe that he went into that house with the intention to kill Tracy Richter Roberts and her son Murray. While investigators are following up on the possible lead found in Dustin's notebook, his body is taken to Sioux City, where an autopsy is performed. X-rays are taken at the autopsy, followed by a full body exam. The pathologist is able to determine that the victim, Dustin, has nine entry gunshot wounds, as well as eight exit wounds. One projectile is recovered from the body, and an additional grave wound is found on Dustin's back. The doctor notes that six of the nine entry wounds are in Dustin's back, which is interesting due to the fact that the suspect, Tracy Richter, is claiming that she killed Dustin in self-defense. There's literally a bullet wound in the back of his ear, like he's been executed. Every piece of evidence is carefully cataloged. For investigators, the autopsy tells a story that doesn't line up with the one that Tracy's been telling. This may not be an open and shut case of self-defense. After all, the lieutenant follows up on the possible lead from the notebook and gets in touch with Tracy's ex-husband, Dr. John Pittman. He's careful not to mention the notebook. Only he and a few other investigators know about it. It was decided at that time that they would keep that hush, that they would not disclose it in any way and disseminate either you know, its contents or its existence to anybody. Uh, figuring that the first person to talk about it, the first person to have this knowledge of its contents, would be uh, would have some 
some, some questions to answer. Dr. Pittman is eager to help the investigation. He answers all the questions and provides his alibi for December 13th. Tells detectives he's never spoken to or had any contact with Justin Wade. He does tell them that he's in an ongoing custody battle with Bert. Dr. Pittman informs his lieutenant that in 1991, Tracy was charged for using a firearm in Colorado when she fired a round into the ceiling of their home. He informs him that Tracy has a history of criminal activity. Not only that, on more than one occasion, she has made accusations that he has sexually abused their son, Bert. All of those accusations have been unsubstantiated. Dr. Pittman essentially paints a picture of Tracy as a woman who will basically do anything, including leveraging her own son to get what she wants. She wanted custody of Bert, and she knew that with her background and that John Pittman had remarried and he was living a really solid, healthy lifestyle. Good guy. She knew she was going to lose custody to him and his new wife. Investigators look into Dr. Pittman's alibi, as well as his allegations about Tracy's history, and they find that it all checks out. They've eliminated him as a suspect, but in doing so, they've just raised more questions. Why would his name be in Dustin's notebook? Why would Dustin attack Tracy? Who is the second attacker? Is Tracy's account accurate, or is there something she's not telling police? The narrative isn't adding up, and as far as public perception is concerned, the residents of Early aren't sure what to believe. Tracy's story has hit the local papers, and rumors and gossip about what has really happened spread quickly. I think there are a number of different reactions from people within the community. Uh, some, you know, taking, uh, you know, the weedy side, you know, some believing that, you know, she she was a, a genuine victim. And I thought that the community was fairly split. In an effort to control the narrative, Tracy and Michael appear on the Montel Williams show, where Tracy is touted as, quote, hero mom. The show is broadcast nationally. So in the beginning days after this home invasion, Tracy is viewed as some sort of hero that she protected her family, that she's a gun owner, she knew how to use a weapon, and, you know, uh, we're not going to take it here in early Iowa. You know, you come into our home, we're going to protect ourselves. Almost one year later, on November 28, 2002, Dustin's dad, Brett, commits suicide at his son's grave. In the years that follow, Dustin's mom, Mona, files a case for wrongful death against Tracy, claiming that she lured Dustin in. The civil suit was ultimately dismissed. Tracy was judgment free. The attorney for Dustin's estate, you know, met with Mona, and the two of them, you know, decided that they had gotten from the civil suit what they wanted. It wasn't money, and they wanted answers and information, and it was to get this information and then give it to law enforcement. In 2002, Tracy and her family leave the town of Early, but things with Michael have already started to sour. Michael and, and Tracy divorced a few years after the shooting. The divorce proceedings drug on for years and, you know, were very contentious, very litigious. She begins another custody battle with Michael in addition to the one she's still fighting with Dr. Pittman. While public perception may be on Tracy's side on the national stage, at home, that's not the case. Tracy's claim of self-defense is looked upon with skepticism. Nonetheless, years go by, and it appears that nothing more will come of the case. But not everyone has forgotten. And in August 2008, a special agent of the Department of Criminal Investigation is assigned to investigate Dustin Weedy's murder. Hi, my name is Damian Clark. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, I have some really encouraging news that you'll definitely want to hear. Depending on the plans available in your area, you may be eligible to get extra benefits with the Humana Medicare Advantage Dual Eligible Special Needs Plan. Most plans include the Humana Healthy Options Allowance, a monthly allowance to help pay for eligible groceries, utilities, rent, 
and over-the-counter items like vitamins, pain relievers, first aid supplies, and more. The Healthy Options Allowance is loaded onto a prepaid card each month, and whatever you don't spend carries over from each month. You can pay nothing for covered prescriptions all year long, even name brand drugs. All plans have $0 co-pays for covered preventive dental services, which include two free cleanings a year, as well as fillings. They may also have vision coverage, including vision exams, and a yearly allowance towards eyewear, such as lenses or contacts. Even hearing coverage, which includes routine hearing exams and covered sports hearing aids. You'll even have a $0 copay for routine vaccines and telehealth visits. Plus, your doctor, hospital, and pharmacy may already be part of our large Humana networks. So call the number on your screen now to speak with a licensed Humana sales agent. If you're eligible, they can even help enroll you over the phone in a Humana Medicare Advantage dual eligible special needs plan. When you choose Humana, you'll find the benefits and support that our members have asked for. Like a monthly allowance to help pay for eligible groceries, utilities, rent, and over-the-counter items. Prescriptions where you can pay nothing. You could get $0 copays for covered preventive dental services, vision, even hearing coverage and our large networks of doctors, hospitals, and pharmacists. So call the number on your screen now to speak with a licensed Humana sales agent to see if you qualify to enroll in a plan with extra benefits. Wouldn't you love benefits like a monthly allowance? To help pay for eligible groceries, utilities, rent, and over-the-counter items. Covered prescriptions where you can pay nothing all year long, even for the name brand ones. Just think of what benefits like these can do for your health and your life. So if you have Medicare and Medicaid, call the number on your screen now and speak with a licensed Humana sales agent. If you're eligible, they can even help enroll you over the phone in a Humana Medicare Advantage dual eligible special needs plan. And remember, annual enrollment ends on December 7th. So call now, Humana, a more human way to health care. They were gunned down. This is a Stone Cold Killer. Now, determined detectives will have to trace the ballistics to track down their shooter. We are all hands on deck targeted for murder. Next on True Crime Network. In December 2001, Tracy Richter claims she is attacked in her home by her neighbor, Dustin Weedy, and his second assailant. In self-defense, she shoots and kills Dustin. She's touted as a hero mom by the press for defending her children. But the town folk of early Iowa aren't convinced by her story of self-defense. And neither is the special agent, who in 2008 is assigned to further investigate the shooting death of Dustin. One of the aha moments in this case that tells the agent you're on the right track comes when he discovers that Tracy had knowledge of the pink notebook from Dustin's car. When the two you know, began the divorce proceedings, Tracy began positioning Michael as maybe the second intruder, or at least somebody that had put Dustin up to this. You know, so she completely backed off from Dr. Pittman and had moved on to putting Michael uh, at the forefront of being culpable for Dustin's death was very proactive in, you know, manufacturing